you know, wrestling fans, you know, guys, I'm sure a lot of you want me to come on here and say that this Monday Night Raw was just great, awesome, spectacular, fantastic, the best Raw you've ever seen. Right? You want me to say that? You want me to come on here and say it's fantastic. It's glorious. Right? Just because of one segment. One segment. And that was at the end of the show where Dean Ambrose came out. And they said that Dean Ambrose was going to be Seth Rollins corner at SummerSlam. Now, when you look at the rest of the show, you can't say that this was a great, glorious, spectacular, fantastic show. Monday Night Raw was an absolute disaster tonight. I was excited about Dean Ambrose coming back. Don't get me wrong. Two things are going to happen. One of two things. Either he's going to turn heel or they're going to form some type of tag team. And we're going to see an excellent rivalry with uh, these four guys leaning throughout the fall. I see that happening. If Dean Ambrose does not turn heel which I can see that happening sooner rather than later because he has a very different look now. Shorter hair, he looks buffer jacked. He looks like he's really been training to get back into the ring. And uh, uh, we didn't see that big of uh, 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 Dean Ambrose when he was here before he got hurt. So I have to wait and see what WWE does, whatever the case. When you look at that, and then you look at the rest of the show, the rest of the show really drags Monday Night Raw down into the gutters. How many times were we uh, told about Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns? How many times did we see an advertisement or something along those lines about these two guys at SummerSlam. As if we didn't know it enough already. What was it? Five, six times a night? Even during the IC Championship contract signing, Kurt Angle still addressed it. Enough. WWE uh, enough. First off, there's Brock Lesnar and how he was portrayed tonight. First of all, you have him portrayed as this guy who is an absolute beast, monster, goes around, beats everybody up, destroyers, throws people on steel steps, blah, 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 blah. Then you have him wanting to eat baked potatoes and, 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 and uh, sour cream on top of it and chives and bacon bits along with everything else and, and, and steaks that are burnt and well done and you want to – him to have salads and broccoli and have his beer and sodas and, and uh, champagne and his uh, magazines and his footstool to put his feet on while he's at Monday Night Raw, not watching the show. So you want him to look like that. And then the next time he's on there, <clears throat> in the words of Michael Cole, you want him to look like a coward. Give me a break. No one's buying this garbage. The WWE, you have been feeding us this junk 
long enough. Get SummerSlam here and done as far as this rivalry is concerned. I, I, I don't see how you can say that this has been a good build. How you have built this matchup well and say, wow, this was something to be proud of. We really did a good job about this. We really did the best we could out of a bad situation. No. I can't see how you are looking at yourselves in the mirror and saying that. No. They're probably saying wrestling fans are going to eat this junk whether they like it or not. But Sunday, we are finally done with all... The Paul Heyman throwing stuff, spraying stuff in Roman Reigns' face. We're done with all the F5s. We're done with the German suplexes. We're done with the Superman punches, the spears. We're done with all that. We're done with him reading magazines and everything else I just made fun of. We're done with all of it. It's down to SummerSlam this Sunday. Let's get it over with. That's all I have to say about that. I'm done talking about Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar, and Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman, I hope, I hope you find yourself another Paul Heyman guy when Brock Lesnar decides to go to the UFC after this matchup and just stay with WWE like he's doing right now because I don't see him leaving the WWE completely. But that's for another subject for another day. What else did we see on Monday Night Raw tonight? Baron Corbin versus Tyler Breeze. Who cares? Does anybody care about Baron Corbin making a match uh, where, quite frankly, he was going to get the easy end out of the deal and uh, he was going to feed Finn Balor harder punishment? Does anybody give a... a, a rats behind about that I know I don't you know this matchup sh is pre-show worthy Finn Balor and Baron Corbin is unless Finn Balor brings out the uh, Demon King something we haven't seen and who knows how long but we even had to witness the modern day Jinder Mahal tonight because of the garbage that had to do with Baron Corbin tonight and Finn Balor because we were supposed to get a handicap matchup Mahal and Kevin Owens taking on Finn Balor and of course as we know that wasn't going to happen because Kevin Owens is having this rivalry with Braun Strowman. Curio comes out, adds to the matchup, and we get Strowman as Balor's tag team partner. Strowman and Balor victorious tonight. I don't see Strowman losing at SummerSlam. I don't see it whatsoever. I don't care if he did win, because, you know, usually the guy that wins at the go-home show loses at the pay-per-view, and it's not happening. I don't care what anybody says. It's not happening at SummerSlam. 
The B team versus the revival versus the leader of worlds. Yes. For the tag team championships. The leader of worlds get beat him and the B team still your tag team champions. You want to know how important the tag team titles are on Monday Night Raw? Zero. Lick. They're not. And you want to know why? Because the B team are taking on the revival on the pre-show of SummerSlam. That explains everything that was announced tonight on Raw. Bobby Roode and Titus Worldwide took on AOP and Mojo Rawley. That's all I had to say about that. Bobby Roode and Titus Worldwide victorious in the six-man tag team matchup. I am glad Bobby Roode was victorious. But AOP, you know, if, if you're going to uh, uh, give them some momentum in the rivalry with Titus uh, Worldwide, then you need to have them pick up wins. And they haven't had a ton of those here as of late. Just saying, WWE. And I actually care less about Mojo Raleigh. He He's just a whatever. Sasha Banks lost to Ruby Riot. I am getting really tired. I don't know about you of seeing Ruby Riot versus Sasha Banks. And then the Riot Squad versus the Banks and Bailey, or Bailey versus Ruby Riot, or the Riot Squad versus someone of those two in some type of singles matchup or some type of tag team matchup. I'm getting tired of seeing it. Do something else with these girls. It's a drag. You can do better than this, WWE. It is the definition of lazy creativity. Right there. And finally, before I go, and before we get to Ron the Rousey segment. We did have um, a very unfortunate uh, thing happen to all of us wrestling fans um, today. Jim D. Anvil Neidhart passed away. And anybody that was an old school fan that grew up in the 80s, early 90s, and watched the WWF and enjoyed and loved tag team wrestling, enjoyed the, the heart uh, uh, um, rivalry in 93 and 94 cornerstone of that was Jim the Anvil Neinhart along with his uh, tag team partner Brett the Hart Foundation two time tag team champions I remember getting excited to see him in demolition that matchup at SummerSlam when the Hart Foundation won two out of three falls. That was a very, very fond memory of uh, mine. And King of the Ring, 1994, when he cost Razor Ramon the King of the Ring, helping Owen Hart win. And, of course, saving Bret Hart's championship, which only added fuel to the rivalry 
with Bret Hart and Owen Hart with all this stuff that he did at the King of the Ring, which led into SummerSlam of that year, the big, huge steel cage matchup. Whatever the case, his memories, his legacy still lives on with Natalia. And I think all of our thoughts and prayers go out to the Hart family, the Nine Hart family, and uh, Natalia, wherever she's at. Thoughts and prayers go out to her as well. And uh, finally, to uh, end this Monday Night Raw review, Ronda Rousey, she came out and she cut uh, an awesome uh, uh, promo on the Anvil's passing. And, uh, you know, what can you say? She did a great job, you know, representing WWE really as uh, they were trying to, to say their thanks and everything and being Natalia's friend. So uh, I uh, I will say that uh, Ronda Rousey did a fantastic job doing that. And uh, it was a, a really good thing that they did to open up Monday Night Raw. And as far as Alexa Bliss and Ember Moon is concerned, Ember Moon picks up the victory and whatever. Alexa Bliss takes on Ronda Rousey this Sunday at SummerSlam. Are we real excited for SummerSlam this coming Sunday? The biggest Party of the summer, the biggest event of the summer? No. 12 matches. Going to be five and a half, six hours. Because you know WWE is going to stretch it on. And are we excited for it? No. No. Outside of a couple matches. But you all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell, which is most appreciated. Go to Facebook and Twitter and follow me also at 2007Webby. That'll be appreciated as well. And of course, until I see you again for SmackDown Live Review tomorrow night, what will happen with AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy returns, amongst everything else. This is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.